Okay, Monday Marker Report. You think we would go another week without one? Uh, I think not. So here we are for the week ending November 26, 2023. What a blockbuster this Monday Marker Report has become. Uh, We have 24 total lots that we're going to talk about today. Uh, All coins that have sold on greatcollections.com yesterday. Um, so yeah, I mean, we are beyond Thanksgiving. Uh, this is true. We're probably at the pinnacle of the busiest time of the year for numismatics. And it shows here today in this particular lineup of coins. Now, a lot of the coins that we're going to cover, uh, are going to be some of those premier registry set examples. And boy, do we have quite a few of them coins that traditionally we wouldn't, you know, give a second guess as to them being worth, you know, thousands of dollars because of their mintage and their relative non-scarcity. I mean, these coins are made into the millions and hundreds of millions. It's just crazy to see how these coins can end up here all in one shot in one uh, in one go around. Uh, but it's a good, it's going to be exciting to share this information with you here today. Um, so if this is your first time here, we take a look at some of the most relevant post-1900, what we call modern era of graded coins to have sold in the last seven days. And um, Great Collections continues to be uh, the the gold standard in the hobby, the market, um, for a lot of these uh, these high-end pieces, whether they're collectible, uh, collectible level numismatic pieces, you know, for type, or possibly that registry set, if you're participating in a PCGS or NGC registry, uh, a lot of the coins that you see here today all coming from great collections, and they have been one of the uh, the largest forces of such. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video as we take a look at uh, at the, the pieces that will make your heart flutter as they did mine. My goodness, a lot to talk about here today. Um, quick little update before we jump right in to all of the lots. Uh, we did have another uh, notification for you guys for coming from Whatnot. This is my personal calendar of events for Blue Ridge Silverhound. We have part eight of the Unsearched Wheat Scent Roll auction uh, continuing on tomorrow, November 28th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a rowdy Tuesday night. Hopefully I get to see you guys there. Uh, if not to bid on anything, just to hang out and be with other like-minded coin people like myself. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. But what's really going to be a, a lot of fun, uh, just a couple short weeks away, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Blue Ridge Silverhound Holiday Giveaway on Whatnot. It's going to be Friday, December 15th, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Nothing but giveaways all stream long. The stream's going to be about two hours long, and it's going to give some lucky someone, actually a number of lucky someones out there, a real opportunity uh, to grab a hold of a uh, piece personally selected by yours truly. And there's going to be a lot of magnificent coins that you're going to see in this giveaway. Uh, So I hope, hope to see you guys there. If you are not signed up, on whatnot what are you waiting for i have my referral link down below in the description box go ahead join up and grab yourself 15 dollars in store credit that you could use right away um and uh bookmark these two pages here coming up again one for tomorrow and another one in a couple weeks but we will have plenty more auctions between now and that holiday giveaway event um on the 15th so i hope to see you guys there all right let's go ahead and jump right in what has sold Wow, 1995 Lincoln Memorial Scent. This is the uh, the world famous doubled die obverse. It's also refer- uh, affectionately referred to as the FS 101 Cherry Pickers Guide variety. Now, this coin has had a long storied career that um, that goes nearly 30 years back. Um, this coin was talked about uh, not only in the coin community 28 years ago, but it was even featured on a few news outlets. Um, you know, as being this big discovery. And uh, this one is a great coin even today. Uh, so you can be as affordable as you want to and grabbing up one of these pieces for your collection. Or if all you care about is the highest grade, then look no further. This is the one that you need right here. 
Um, as you can see, it's got some tremendous doubling on the word liberty and the motto in God we trust. Uh, there's no mistaking this for any other coin like it. This one ended up selling for $2,306.25, and that's largely due to the fact that it is a uh, mid state 69 red, which is an insanely high grade for this coin. And uh, when you're able to grab a 69 grade, uh, not only is it a famous meme out there, we all know what that is, but um, yeah, it's it's going to earn you some uh, some pretty serious cash at the end of the day. Okay, so we do have a couple of uh, proof coins. Uh, they're all, you know, later dated examples, uh, not particularly rare. Uh, these are a couple of dates that are quite common. <clears throat> so if you're out there hunting through proof sets and you find uh, a few of these that look inexplicably clean to the point where they're perfect, then pay close attention here. This is a 1982S. PCGS gave this one a perfect 70 grade. It's full red. It's got deep cameo, nice, beautiful frost all throughout the coin that's uh, accented by the dark mirrored fields that traditionally make a deep cameo happen here. Uh, so this particular one ended up selling for $1,238.62. Um, this is one of the more common dates to find perfect 70s. Um, you know, I mean, that's no indication to the price, but, you know, it still seems like a very expensive coin because it is. Um, but it's one of the lesser expensive proof 70s that you will find out there on this particular date. Uh, in contrast, this one is considerably more scarce than a perfect 70. So let's talk about it. 1978S this time around. Uh, beautiful deep cameo contrast. It's it's a very clean coin. Um you know, so, some folks have asked me, well, Sean, what is the big differentiator between a 69 and a 70? Because it seems to me that I would try and grade out a coin and it would always come back a 69. I want that perfect grade. And it really comes down to my, the, the minutia, the details. There might be an errant uh, contact mark. Um, there might be a few little water spots in the fields that maybe you didn't pinpoint right away there might be a carbon spot you know it's really really small uh details like that that could set one um set apart a 69 from a 70 so with that being said this one ended up selling and it's a good looking coin and the final hammer was two thousand twenty five dollars so about seven hundred and some odd almost eight hundred dollars more than the previous coin so you can see that there is a lot less of this one in the perfect 70 than the 82s all right, continuing on down the line, uh, we have a couple of Lincoln sets that, uh, uh, you know, you can feel the heat coming. We're not quite there yet. I mean, these are some good coins, but they're, there's a trio of them uh, that, that'll make your jaw drop. Uh, here's 1971 Lincoln. Nice high grade. Uh, it's a top pop in a mid-state 67 plus. Uh, full red. Uh, you know, good looking coin. This is going to be a necessity in any Lincoln cent registry. Uh, so no surprise that this one ended up still as a valuable, uh, piece to that collection. This one sold for $1,747 and 12 cents. Um, nice, nice little chunk of change, but you know, there are other dates around this, uh, that are considerably more scarce and more valuable in the 67 plus. Um, so uh, even still, this one is still going to be needed out there. And because of that, it's reflected on this price tag. 1955 Lincoln Wheat Cent. Um, you're staring at a coin that even though it's not the big double to die obverse, this one is actually more value, valuable than a few of those um, particular DDOs. Uh, largely in part due to its grade. It's a CAC green bean coin as well. 67 plus full red example. Again, another, another major chase in the registry sets out there. This one sold for $5,375.25, um, and it's also worth noting that this is a previous Jack Lee collection um, who assembled one of the finest uh, registries of Lincoln Sense that you'll ever lay eyes on. This is one of them right here from that storied collection. Well, here we are. We got a trio, and it's, uh, it's kind of deafening to note that these three coins were minted into oblivion there there was a bunch of these made so 
How can we talk about three coins that sold for in excess of $60,000 combined? Well, it's real simple. The Lincoln Set Registry crowd, they are a crazy bunch. They have probably more money than they do brains, and that's not a knock against them. I mean, when you have that kind of money uh, to spend on, uh, you know, what we consider to be very pedestrian dates of Lincoln Sets, then that that's more uh, you know more about who you are as a successful individual than is anything else. So we have a 1951s Lincoln here. Again, not particularly rare. Um, you know, BU rolls of this particular date will end up sending you back around thirty dollars. Nothing too crazy, but that is generally where you're going to find a premier specimen like this, which ended up as a 68 red through PCGS. Uh, that is quite crazy. Uh, very velvety looking coin uh, by surface standards. And uh, this one, ladies and gentlemen, a show stopper at $20,250. Uh, yeah, yeah, this Lincoln Cent right here could buy you a car if you wanted to. Speaking of which, 1946, I'm telling you guys, this is, uh, this is a coin that... Um, uh, that is not hard to find in mid-state red. And if you are a savvy cherry picker, you might find one that's as good as this. Now it's a PCGS mid-state 67 plus full red specimen. Again, another high-end top pop coin here. As a matter of fact, this one is the single finest known of a 1946 Philadelphia that you will ever see. And uh, we had one sell here on Great Collections to the tune of $25,312.50. Okay, um, that's nutty. Um, you know, it's, again, you, you could find a, a BU raw coin at a coin shop or show for probably around a buck or two. But, yeah, again, the devil's in the details here. All right, um, the contact marks have to be at a minimum, if non-existent. It has to be just an overall clean coin that's devoid of any contact marks, chatter, uh, carbon spotting, uh, you name it. And then also the rims have to be pretty clean on it as well to earn that kind of money. And then uh, finally, uh, this one, this one, I'll give it some extra consideration because it has some pretty nice, very light toning on there. Um, there's just something about toned copper. All right, that that really, really is a uh, a popular pick with a lot of enthusiasts of Lincoln Sets. Uh, so this one right here is a 68 red. Again, another fine grade. Uh, there's only probably a couple of these that exist in the 68. Uh, truly remarkable. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a, yet again another coin that ended up selling for $20,868.75. Again, we're, we're living in kind of wild times here. Um, these three coins are not investable by any means. They are made strictly for these deep pocket registry set participants. Um, and the coins will probably end up being socked away uh, for many years. So the likelihood that you'll see this same coin or another one likely uh, like it, um, yeah, it's, it's probably not going to happen. All right, not anytime soon. Okay, well, after that friggin' massive heart attack of uh, Lincoln Sense, uh, yeah, we, we're in the nickels, okay? Nickels, we're, we're fine this week, you know? 1950-70 is a, uh, it's a tough date in full steps, and we have one here that PC, uh, PCGS had graded a 67 FS. Um, you know, this one does have a fair amount of luster, something that you just don't see on these particular dates. And this one, ladies and gentlemen, sold for $3,051, okay? Yeah, that's that's quite a bit of money for, yet again, another high production date. Uh, we, we know why this one's here. Uh, this this one's a, a stunner. I, I love this one. 1945D, Jefferson Nickel, uh, of course. Y you don't get color like this unless it's silver, all right? So th this one is a wartime silver. Yeah, it's 35% silver and manganese. Uh, added in there, um, which which does a whole lot of wonders for, uh, you know, preservation, for color, for toning, uh, tarnish for a lot of you old school heads out there um, that, that dabble in sterling. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, this one does not have full steps by grade, 
Uh, but NGC gave it a crazy mid-state 68 plus with a star. The star generally denotes uh, eye appeal in this case, and that that's exactly what we have here. All right, and uh, because of that, uh, this one ended up selling for two thousand nine hundred sixty-four dollars and three cents. So again, we're a few bucks shy of three grand here. Just an absolute monster of a nickel. And 1939D, uh, one of the disputed, I guess, you know, kind of keys of the series between this and the 50D, you know, it's a toss-up. Um, however, this one is the reverse of 38, all right? So it's got the wavy steps on the reverse. Uh, it's nothing like the reverse of 40 um, that, you know, has generally a much crisper reverse on these. Uh, so, yeah, again, this one, very, very nice. Uh, Planchet, very nice quality. It's got a little bit of peripheral toning on the obverse, you know, as indicated uh, by the, the yellows and pinks that you can see on here. Uh, a, a fine coin, you know, again, probably more for a registry set. And this one sold for $1,357.63. Again, it's a 66 full stepper. Um, easy grade to find. Uh, uh, not so much easy grade, but easy coin and date to find with full steps as they were generally very well struck at the onset of this new design. Uh, our first and only CAC G graded coin comes in the way of this 1938D over S. Uh, this is a, a great over mint mark to look for. Um, some of you may not be aware, but when this coin released in 1938, everybody knew that it was going to be in short production, and because of that, a lot of them were saved up in high grades. So, you know, it would be more tougher to find these in much lower grades. Uh, generally, anything under VF is non-existent of a 38D. Um, but in any event, this one right here uh, far exceeds that at a min, a min state 67 plus, which is huge. Um, and again, uh, CAC is in the game uh, with some, uh, you know, popular opinion in the grading scheme of things. Uh, this one right here sold for $1,649.25. Uh, good to see them, you know, firmly getting a grasp on things in the grading market and really giving PCGS and NGC a well-deserved competition here. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. You know, early indicators is that catchy graded coins are strong sellers. Uh, we also have this 1920D, don't get me started, very tough date. You know, it bridge, bridges the gap from what is normally a very nice, well-struck era of teens, buffaloes. And then when you get into the 20s, things kind of go downhill. Now, this one is in phenomenal shape. It's a Mint State 66 by NGC. And uh, this one ended up selling for $19,125. Um, just a really beautiful coin and a very tough date. 1917D, yeah, we have a few tough ones here. Uh, th these are coins traditionally that are not garden variety. You know, it's not like you're going to go out and find one of these in a collection. Um, you know, and, and if you did, you know what you have there, all right? Um, generally, these coins don't stay raw for too long uh, before they're graded. Um, even specimens as low as XF to AU, you know, which still commands a pretty good market for some of these Denver and San Francisco minted teens buffaloes. This one is a 65, you know, huge coin, CAC certified as well, and it's sold for $2,293.88. And the final nickel of the week has to be a beauty here, 1913S. This is a Type 1, so it features the buffalo on a raised mound. Um, stunner, you know, it's got lots of, uh, lots of eye appeal, uh, the original little spots of toning all throughout the coin on the front and back of the coin, uh, gives it the originality you're looking for if you want something that's been untampered with, right? Um, NGC gave a bomb grade of a 68 on this thing. That is huge. And, uh, because of that, this one ended up selling for a preposterous amount of money, $12,375. Uh, a price tag that is generally best reserved for the Type 2 1913S, um, especially in like mid-state 65, 66 grades. Um, yeah, this, this one is uh, pretty nice and just stunning. Well, the few dimes that we did have this week, um, they aim to please. Uh, this one, we, we know this one's 
why, why this one's here. Um, th this one has everything a bit to do with the color. Uh, the color on this one is uh, enigmatic. It, it's I could stare at this thing for for an hour and feel satisfied after it's all said and done. But it's a 1945S, a uh, relatively common date, especially in mid-state. You could find one raw for about 20 bucks out there. But this one looks like it spent some time somewhere in an album or in an envelope or a keepsake thing. You know, you just never know. Uh, this one right here ended up as mid-state 68 through NGC. Um, you know, this one was graded a while ago. It's an older style uh, in NGC holder. Um, doesn't have full full bands, okay? Very flat on the reverse, but it's all about the color here. Uh, this one sold for $1,676.25. Um, by the time you add in toning, you know, that adds like a whole other element to every coin worth of salt. And uh, Mercury Dimes are one of the most popular out there. And this one is just a true marvel. Here's a 1942S, another big one. However, this one is very well struck. And uh, whether you like the toning or not, you know, it's all original to the coin. This one is a mid-state 68 full bands. NGC did some did some work this week in the uh, the dime department. All right. Uh, great, great coin. Uh, I'm willing to bet this thing is an absolute joy to behold in hand as opposed to looking at the coin on screen here. Uh, this one sold for 3200 $37.75. Uh, uh, just a really pretty coin. Yeah, 1918S. Very tough one. Okay, once we get into the teens and full bands, uh, the gloves kind of come off here. Um, because these are more than just registry set coins. These are coins that are beloved by Mercury Dime enthusiasts in general. Even if they don't participate in uh, a PCGS or NGC registry, you got to give it up. You know, for these individual examples. Uh, so this is a mid-state 65 full bands by NGC. And I'm happy to say that this one ended up eclipsing the $5,000 mark. Um, $5,083.88 was the final price on this one. All right, we have uh, a few quarters. We have a 1967 Washington quarter. This is a special mint set um, uh, piece. That is a mid-state 69 with a little bit of Cameo Frost on there. All right, so very nice. Cameo, any sort of frost on the devices. This is something that you normally see on a special mid-set coin. Uh, but nonetheless, this one sold for $1,029.51. And uh, a couple very beautiful 1950s. Here's a D over S over mint mark. This is the FS601 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. Um, if you're not looking for this variety, again, you probably have no business collecting into Washington Quarters because this is a staple of a variety. Uh, PCGS Mid-State 66, and this one sold for $3,217.50. Our other 1950 is just a straight-up Denver coin uh, with toning uh, on both sides. This is the kind of crustability, this appearance, um, that takes decades to build up, all right? This is nothing that you could replicate um, in days. And uh, because of that, people do recognize the uh, the importance of this old archive toning. This particular one is a mid-state 68. This is intended for a registry set, even with the toning. Uh, NGC gave the grade on this one. And it sold for $6,669.00 here last night, and uh, this was one of my favorites that did sell. Uh, another wow moment came in the way of this 1942 quarter, which, you know, it's a Philadelphia. You know, some would say, well, well you know, I have a few of these in Mint State, and it's like, it's, it's just a normal coin to me and you. You know, you could pick one up for around 20 to 30 bucks, you know. Uh, but this one is on a whole other level. Uh, it's got a light bit of toning, nothing too crazy. It is a mid-state 68, however, through PCGS. Uh, more than surprised that for the price tag, this one doesn't have a CAC green sticker on it. Uh, it did sell for $8,718.75. I could only imagine that this coin would be a ten dollars to $12,000 item with a CAC green sticker. Uh, that's just kind of like the difference maker here. But such a big sale from one of the more plentiful dates of Washington Quarters. 
And uh, we have a few jammies here. Uh, beautiful 1967, 40% candy, right? We, we don't really, um, you know, consider these coins to be anything else but a 40% silver to, uh, to a lot of stackers out there. However, yeah, the toning's pretty nice here. We got lots of yellows and golds and, uh, you know, kind of turning into some of the purples and magentas on the operas there. Um, there's a lot to love. Uh, Mid-state 67 plus is no slouch either. That's a huge grade here for this one. And note the contact mark on the back of the neck of uh, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, so it's far from the perfect coin, but with the right toning and all that stuff, I mean, you have a monster of a coin. This one sold for $1,940.62. And the final coin, ladies and gentlemen, is one that I've talked about on numerous occasions, right? The Type 1 Reverse, 1976 Eisenhower dollars, should have a lot more appreciation after this video. Um, these ha generally have the block letters on the reverse. A reverse die that was intended for the 40% uh, silver variation of the coin ended up on the clad version, which, uh, you know, the 76 Denver is the one that's a little bit more available in the marketplace the type one reverse philly is an enormously expensive coin in mid-state 67 which is what this one landed uh so this one sold for one thousand nine hundred ninety six dollars at 88 cents uh i can only imagine that a philadelphia uh, of the same grade will probably end up being four to five times this amount that's how much more scarce um, that particular coin is in that grade, uh, but really cool way to end things off here this week. All right, as usual, our own little fine print is at the very end of the video. It is intended for entertainment purposes only, not financial advice. Please do collect and grade responsibly if you feel like you need to, you know, get into grading to help fill the need of some of these big time dollar amounts here. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do, th do it for today. Thank you guys again for all of your views and support. You guys are amazing. Uh, stay tuned for more coin content. Um, as we head on through the rest of the holiday season, we have a few very solid weeks left of uh, some prime activity. Whether you're the hunter or the gatherer, uh, you're going to enjoy the market here in the next few weeks. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my content and the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm your host, Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound, and I bid adieu. So you guys take care, have fun in this hobby, and I will see you on the next coin video.